Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're taking a look at the Odin Smart. Before we get started, roll those credits. So, we are taking a look at the Odin Smart, the new machine from Focus. So, Focus are a brand that we have worked with before. We reviewed their original Odin 5, and it was a really excellent contender in the space. This is a refined version of that. Something that I love about Focus as a brand, um, and big shout out to Dora, um, who is uh, running the Facebook page. If you wanna take a look at the Facebook page for, uh, for Focus, take a look in the video description, the link will be there. So their customer support is second to none. So they are excellent, they're very responsive, they've got a really good ticketing system, um, they're really on par with artillery and companies like that who are much, much larger and have much, much more resource. Dora is incredibly interactive with the community. They're always doing giveaways, they're doing prize draws and things like that. And after a bunch of community feedback, here we are. Now, the key changes that are in this, okay? You've got to think of this as a refined version of the Odin 5. So, normally we would do a live unboxing. We can't do that because this is a world exclusive and we wanted to have some footage of this thing running for you when this thing drops. Now, first and foremost, this machine is being released on Kickstarter. I have a general disclaimer about Kickstarters. When you buy something on Kickstarter, you are not buying a product, you are backing a company. You have almost no consumer rights and you must be prepared for that project to fail. It is highly unlikely that is what is going to happen with Focus. They are already a player in the space. They have already released machines. These machines are already made. This is a final consumer version, not a review version. So there is no specific reason why you should be concerned about backing this project. But you must be aware of the issues with Kickstarter that you don't necessarily have the same level of protection. You make your own choices about Kickstarter. I'm just here to have a chat about this machine. So the key differences between this machine and the last is a redesigned tool head with an ultra short throw direct drive hot end. They've done some redesigning on fan shrouds and things like that. They currently say that this machine will print at 300 millimeters a second. So we will see how that goes. Um, and as well, it obviously has the smart element. So the smart element is the ability to, um, it's got a smart camera in it, so you can do your own time lapses, which if you are on any social media platform, you will know are really cool, they're really popular. You can share from the app directly to those um, platforms, and we will show you the app um, as part of this video. So um, as well as that, it comes 99% pre-assembled. The machine, you just, in theory, fold up, bolts in, off you go. The part that I'm really excited about is the part that means I can finally start recommending this machine to brand new users. And that is the user-friendly self-test function. This is mirrored directly off of what happens with a Prusa Mark III when you start it up, but it goes through and it does a full test of everything. It tests the hot end, the heat bed, it tests the X, Y, and Z, the filament sensor and the filament load. And as a result, this is gonna make it much easier for new people when they're joining the hobby to start to understand whether or not their machine is set up correctly. So that, is obviously excellent. The build volume is the same as a pre as the uh, Focus Odin 5 was, which is 235 by 235 by 250. 
Um, the park calling, as I say, has been redone, but without further ado, let's get this box open. So Focus always has a really nice unboxing experience. Um, like it's a really nice box. Most boxes, most printers you get are just in this sort of nondescript brown container that could have anything in it. But with this, very, very different. So first things first, we'll pull this out. So this is our accessory box. This is our little spool of filament. We then, do we just pull? We can't just pull, surely. Box goes down there. And then we take off one side. Ooh, it's silver. So those who come from an Odin 5 will remember, or will know, I should say, that um, that normally these are uh, these are black, but this one is grey. So okay, so let me just get this stuff off here. Careful not to scratch anything. There we go. And then we just, oh, it does literally fold, doesn't it? Okay, fine. So we just, shoop. Nice little peel. Take these out. Take these off. Dual Z, very nice on a machine of this size. What we've come to expect from Odin, to be fair. We've got an ultra base carborundum style bed. for the moment. Oh, it's got these bed clips on it. Nice to see a company actually using proper bed clips rather than using those horrible um, bulldog clips that you get on so many machines. So, let's open up the accessory pod. Little quick start guide and a user manual, which is very well translated. Actual sentences, grammar, the whole nine yards. So it does come with a BL touch bracket. So that's T nuts, fixing screws, filament holder screw, or oh, that's what it says in the box anyway. BL touch bracket screw. Oh, okay. So it looks like you can fit a BL touch to this. So that's the T nut, they're the fixing screws. So just four screws, is that right? Let's have a look. So we get our spatula. We get a couple of... This is our film spool holder. Ooh. We get a very nice uh, spool holder. So this is... Is it? There we go. An aluminium spool holder you do not see that very often but like a really nice anodized color so like it's it's like an anodized silver with a with a with a bar on it quite nice we get our obligatory set of tiny little allen keys we get a couple more larger we get a nozzle changer and this is normally to hold the block so let's grab out allen keys and let's screw this in uh, 
That's one. That's two. Two. This is three. And this is four. We've then got T nuts for the filament holder. T-nuts for the filament holder. That goes on the back. Right. Right there. Except I've put those on the wrong way around. This is what happens when you don't read the manuals. Okay. There we go. Filament holder installed. So there is a synchronization belt across these Zs. We do obviously have these two parts here. Yeah, all we need to do is just clip that off. There we go. And what we have is a fully built 3D printer in a record amount of time, I think. Short of coming out of the box completely made, I think that's about as easy as that setup's ever gonna get. So let's plug her in and see what she does. On she goes. So I really like this sort of like brushed aluminium look. It's really nice. Right, so new UI. Let's start by levelling the bed. Whilst that is going down, we will take a look in here to see what else we have. So we have the USB stick. We have a knob for the sides. And we do have a BL Touch sensor bracket that will fit onto this machine. So clearly, it is an option to upgrade this machine with a BL Touch if you wish to. Quite a nice little branded um, USB, uh, USB drive. And then we will just pop that on the side there. No idea what that does. Pop this little cover on there like that. Okay, so now we're powered on. Uh, let's take a look at the self-test system. So we go to check, confirm. Temperatures for the print head and the bed are done. You can see that it will just now 
go through, test the X, and then the Y. The Z axis then moves down and triggers and then moves up. So what this doesn't test is it doesn't test the uh, belt tension, which is something that does happen on the Prusa test. Um, but when you're setting up your machine, knowing that all of your axes work, knowing that your things are heating up, your filament sensors working and all that good stuff, it's all super useful. It's a really good feature for beginners, people who are just starting out. If this is their first printer, you've literally had to install four screws. And then once this goes through and the Z rehomes, then you'll know that everything that's supposed to be working is, and then you can go through the leveling procedure. So, as we saw, self-test went very well. Doesn't really tell you that much more than you already needed to know. It just tells you that your X stops are working, which is really just homing the machine. It tells you that it's definitely got readouts from the bed and from the hot end, and it tells you whether or not the filament sensor is working. Useful, and if you are a new starter, they can be intimidating things to try and figure out. You build your first machine, you press home and you cross your fingers to make sure the thing doesn't explode. At least that self-test gives new users a little bit of confidence that what they're doing is working. So now let's move on to the app to see what the camera looks like. So we bust out the phone. So first of all, we open the focus app. We agree. We will need to sign up. Let's put in our Honey Badger 3D print and paint email address. Grab that from our inbox. So here we are on my phone. We open up Focus and you can see the Odin Smart is sitting there idle and online. So you create an account when you go in and uh, there's two ways to set up your printer. You can either connect through your phone to the Wi-Fi hotspot that it creates or you raise your Z axis up and you can actually hold the QR code that's produced on the screen of the phone so that you're able to um, get, your, uh, get your printer added to your network. We go in and we can see that there is our Odin Smart. So we click here before printing, make sure there's no objects on the build plate, which there are not. We click print. We go to the USB disk and we're going to put on a Benchy. The estimated print time of this is five hours. So we start printing. And then it's come up on the screen. So let's just go in here and you can see that it is preheating. So now let's watch it print. And just like that, we're back. And Honey Badger don't care about your continuity. Costume change. So, um, so right, so we've been playing with this a little bit more outside of the review, doing a few other bits and pieces. Um, so, what have we done? So the first thing it, we did, unsurprisingly, was do the calibration cube, and I wanted to try and do this a little bit faster, so I blew it up by, uh, by to 200% the original scale. It's a normal calibration cube. I will show you the calibration cube in a moment. The time lapse is unsurprising. Um, there is a reality that uh, that I think it possibly shoots a bit more of the outside world than I was expecting it to. Um, 
you can sort of see my legs dancing around in the background. Um, you can't make that camera live, so you can't sort of share a live feed over to your um, over to your your social media or anything. But what you can do is that it shoots the pictures. You can you have to access the app. Once you're in the app, you can download it to your phone, and then once you've downloaded the video to your phone, off you go. There's also an SD card that sits in here. You can take that SD card out, and you can get the uh, you can get the video off of it that way. Um, there's also all of the individual. So there's there's a video file, but there's also all the individual pictures that it took. So if you want a longer or a shorter um, time lapse then you could do that if you wanted to. So, fairly versatile, fairly good. Um, let's take a look at how this printed. Okay, so, calibration cube, 200% original scale. So, this was done in the silk filament. Let's get that in focus, there we go. It's done, it, this is Overture's Silk PLA. Now, silk always gives a fairly nice finish anyway, but what you will see is you will see that, uh, that there is a little bit of ghosting on this. So this was printed at 200 millimeters a second. You can see on that corner as well. The top layers are fine. The bottom layers were a little bit ropey. I probably should have done a slower first layer than I did. Um, but these, again, these were just using the original focuses the focus odins um these are just using their settings but whacking the uh whacking the speed up a fair chunk so i mean look it printed it printed quite nicely 200 millimeters a second it was it was doing that quite happily it hasn't under extruded it managed to keep up with that pace um so i'm, I'm contextually happy with how that looks right so summary time this is an advancement over the last Odin. I am going to stop short of recommending it, and there is a reason why I'm doing that. It's not because this isn't a good machine, because actually, it is pretty good. Um, the reason why I'm not going to recommend it is because the machine we have here is an engineering machine. It's an engineering sample. We have been sent this before all of you guys who are back in the Kickstarter, before, before anybody, right? So we are testing it, and as we are testing it, we're feeding back to focus. We have already worked with them, and we've had two or three, um, two or three updates on the firmware already um, that have made material differences. They've updated the user interface that, um, that's on the screen. They've updated the actual core firmware, which made it go a bit faster. They changed the acceleration settings and things like that. And they're con we're constantly doing temperature towers and things like that to see if we can figure out better ways for the machine to work. Um, so as a result, I am not going to give this a Honey Badger score. And the reason why is because the machine that you guys will receive is not this machine. This machine is an engineering sample. So what we'll do is um, we'll carry on. We'll make some more videos. We'll show you guys what this can do. And then we will, and then we will go from there. Um, I do think this is worth backing. I think Focus is a great company that we have worked with before, and Dora, who works at, uh, who works there, is absolutely fantastic. So the community that Focus has is really welcoming, really friendly, really wants to help people. That's rare especially in our community sometimes. We've got some really toxic communities. Um, the after-sales service is, is second to none. There isn't a better... I haven't had a better experience after sales than I have with Focus. And I've got machines that cost thousands. And unsurprisingly, generally speaking, we get treated quite well because people are concerned that we might make a bad video or whatever. That... That's not an issue with, with Focus at all. The after sales that we've had with them has been awesome. To be clear, we have backed this machine. So when it comes out, money where our mouth is, we have bought one. 
So, um, so we will get the same version that you guys do as well. And we will have this engineering sample that hopefully will get upgraded and, and, and do the things it needs to do. So look, the reality is it's a really good machine. I think it's worth backing. We have backed it. Um, and I think you guys should consider backing it as well. It is Kickstarter. If you put money into Kickstarter, you need to be prepared to lose that money, ultimately. I don't think you will. I think, oh, I think Focus will absolutely deliver, but you have to make that decision, not us. So, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for joining us, guys and dolls. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Direct Computers. Link's in the video description down the bottom. We'll see you soon, stay safe. This video is brought to you by Direct Computers. If you're looking for a new gaming machine, desktop PC, laptops or corporate IT services, Direct Computers have what you need at a price you can afford. Take a look at the link in the video description and you can find the Honey Badger build, a PC that we have spec'd out specifically to focus on 3D design and 3D printing. For more information on Direct Computers, check them out in the link in the video description.